We mentioned smart objects a bit earlier in the semester, so let's talk about why it is a good idea to convert your layer to a smart object before you apply a filter. When you apply a filter to a smart object, it becomes a smart filter. Doing this allows the most flexibility and is the ideal way to apply filters. What happens when you apply a smart filter? Well, first, you can edit or delete it at any time. You can apply multiple smart filters to the same smart object. You can hide individual smart filters. You can move or copy smart, el smart filters from one smart object to another. And you can also arrange the stacking order. The best part is you have a filter mask that can be edited to hide and reveal parts of the smart object. With all these benefits, it just makes the most sense to convert to smart objects when using filters so they become smart filters. On this example in the lecture, you see the arrows pointing to the eye. You can click on, on it to hide or view the effect, um, just like when you click on the same symbol on an individual layer. Um, so you can turn these on and off. Um, this arrow is pointing to the name by clicking and dragging on the name of the filter effect you can change that order and the last arrow here um, is pointing to a slider symbol and if you double click right here you can change the blending mode and opacity tons of benefits and also besides PSD files TIFF and PDF file formats support smart filters so let's go over to Photoshop and continue this demonstration. So um, Jessica did this with regular filters on this background copy too. So I'm going to apply the same filter effects here. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and select the background copy, this first copy as the active layer. And I'm going to apply those same filters. But first, before I do that, I'm going to convert this to a smart object. So in order to do that, an easiest way is I'm going to right click here and choose convert to smart object. And once that's done, I will go up to the filter menu and choose filter gallery. And here, as you see, it opens up just right where um, Jessica left off. So I have the same settings that she had being applied. So I have the plastic wrap and the underpainting and both of them have the same settings. And so they're pretty much identical things. Well, let me go ahead and apply this by um, going ahead and showing OK or clicking on OK there. And you see here that there's no difference from that look to that look. But look at this. So this is what we're talking about when we say that it becomes a smart filter. So here is the layer mask for the smart filters. And here are the filters themselves. So here I can hide and click on and show by clicking on this icon right here. I can go in and double click here and change the blending mode of the filter effect and um, to maybe change it in a different way and I can also change the opacity of that filter effect. So a lot of different options here. So on top of that I can actually go back in and to this layer apply another filter and keep building on this. So if I wanted to go back and make changes I could also double click there and go back and edit it again um, to make it even different. So they're the same, but different. And one is smart, and one is not. Can we call it dumb? Would that be OK? I guess it could be. <laughs> one is destructive, and one is non-destructive. OK, that's probably a it's better a way to put PC it. <laughs> answer. OK, so give that a shot on your own, and once you're comfortable making or applying a filter with a smart object, you can move on to the next video in this lecture.